So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today, my hope is to explain to you the direction the world is going in and why, from a Quranic perspective, from the Sunnah perspective, from an Islamic perspective, why the world is moving in the direction that it is in, going in. So, we're going to understand today, uh, from both a philosophical and a historical point of view, what is the uh, the roots of the global reset that we're about to head into or crash into. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a major, major, uh, you can say, um, turning point in history that we're in right now. We are in a crossroads in history between what was normal to what will become the new normal, which is not going to be normal. It'll be anything but, it'll be anything but normal. And uh, so, again, uh, for the people that already see this, they see this. But I will be trying to talk from a perspective of the people that don't agree with this, do not see this. So I'm going to give you all the documentation as I'm speaking. And uh, inshallah ta'ala, I will also add all the links to everything I show uh, into the, um, in, in the, in the, you know, the description box below. Okay. So now the question, uh, let's start with, uh, something uh, very basic, inshallah, and then uh, let's see how this conversation goes. Of course, uh, Bill Gates is very interested in the question of population, okay? Just keep this in mind. And in uh, science and in philosophy, the question of population control and the population and the question of g manipulation of genes uh, relates to the question of eugenics. So just keep this in mind. Okay, as we talk. Now, uh, uh, eugenics is a very big uh, uh, is, is a very big movement. It has many, many, many intellectuals that have, uh, that ha are its adherents. Okay, and uh, there are uh, there is the whole uh, many institutions and many intellectuals follow the idea of eugenics for many, many reasons. And I will be giving you some of those reasons that they, why they want eugenics, okay? And uh, so let us now uh, continue here. Uh, one of the uh, UNES, uh, UNES, uh, UNESCO, uh, uh, Julian Huxley, Huxley uh, was the founder of, uh, this is one of the branches of the United Nations, okay? So the United Nations has many branches it has the World Bank, it has the IMF, it has the World Health Organization, has uh, UNESCO. U UNESCO is really that branch of the United Nations that wants to create a single culture for all of humanity. And uh, anybody who wants to take the time and read this entire document, but I will be pointing out to different aspects of this document in this conversation. Okay, And this is directly from the, uh, the, uh, the digital library that they have. Okay, the United Nations uh, Digital Library. So they have the World Health Organization. They have uh, the, the Club of Rome is a separate organization I'll be talking about shortly. Um, and uh, so now let us get into uh, what is really uh, going on. So one of the ideas, the idea of eugenics, manipulation of genes, uh, it leads to the idea of transhumanism. That how can we evolve human being to be better than he is? And this really all started with Plato and his book called The Republic, which I will touch upon shortly. But over here, what I want to share with you is the idea of, of transhumanism is a subdivision of the idea of eugenics. Okay. The idea is how can we make human beings better than what they are? Um, and so over here, I'd like to share with you uh, some quotes in this uh, this article that talk about this in a very, very uh, sophisticated way. Cyberspace is Platonism as a working product, meaning cyberspace makes human beings superhuman beings. If you look, if you remember in the time of Plato and in the Greeks, they always had gods that were superhumans, like Hercules, for example. Okay, so Shaitan always wants us to worship these types of idols. And whenever you look at the picture of these idols, it's like 
human in a monkey shape or an elephant with extra superpowers, right? So having these like superpowers, okay? Becoming like a demigod, uh, becoming something that is not natural, that is supernatural, okay? And so in that sense, since uh, uh, Plato talked about the idea of the Republic, which I'll be t giving uh, talking about that book, but basically the idea of the Republic is this, you know, um, this idea that, you know, there should be a government in which on top there is the philosopher king, which now we can call the experts, right? And they kind of like, uh, they are the ones that kind of like lead the world, okay? They're the ones that are the wise men. They are the experts that lead the world. And, and that world, human beings are, are like, they are not what we are today, but we are like superhumans, okay? So now, uh, so now uh, let us uh, continue on this. Uh, this idea of becoming superhuman becomes very real with what technology. By the way, Batman was a superhero who was a superhero because of not because he's strong like Superman, or uh, but because he has uh, you know a lot of inventions in his pocket. So the techno pagan magic evolves into programming. Nature is ultimately digital in a sense that when you're dealing with genes. It's like digital. It's like programming. You can take something from one gene and put it into another species and create something new. That's what you do with programming. Okay. And so this is uh, shaitan. And I'll be giving you the verse of the Quran that relates to this issue. But this is shaitan's way of basically saying that, look, I'm going to create my own world in which there will be my own, you can say, uh, my own rules. So the 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 techno counterparts of the ancient oracles so now the ancient oracles were oracles where these uh people you go to and they tell you the future they tell you information you don't know you consult a digital oracle every time you see an internet search engine like google to gain information google looks much like a superhuman mind it satisfies uh some of the features of divinity okay uh, in in the in the pagan sense okay like ancient oracles, Google often provides uh, only uh, ambiguous signs. And our digital oracles also include massive software engines used to predict the future, okay, or simulate the future, okay. And so this idea of, you know, kind of like uh, creating the modern transhumanism resembles the ancient, uh, uh, you know, pagan ways, okay, the magical ways of the, of the past. And transhumanism share many metaphysical ideas. They share goals and methods. Many ancient magical practices have modern technical counterparts. These similarities suggest several further lines of research. Anyway, so he says more needs, research needs to be done in this. But he's absolutely correct that, uh, you know, that paganism uh, par excellence, par excellence would be what? Paganism par excellence would be... Uh, Man evolved higher into like a demigod, okay? And so in the time of the Dajjal, Dajjal will do great things. But because he's able to do great things, he's going to give you great things. He's going to give you zinatul hayat dunya okay? He's going to, and shaitan, his goal in terms of uh, the his, 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 his way of thinking, okay, is as follows. At what point does shaitan be able to command human beings to do things? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala Wala I will lead them astray. Number one. Once they're in this path of being astray as humanity as a whole, then what? Wala and then I will command, I will give them hopes. What is transhumanism? What is eugenics? Is to give them hopes that you'll become something bigger and better. Technology is no, not, no longer a tool that you use, but it is something that you use to become your true self. It is something that you become, use to become a demigod, you know. And then after he leads them astray and gives them hopes, then now the road is free to what? 
to command human beings and then he says wala amirannahum and then what will he do and I will surely what cause them to cut their ears of the cows which is already happening I have already shown this it's already happening in my previous lecture then what then I will again command them so the, with the cutting of the ears what happens the beginning of eugenics the beginning of learning how to deal with the genes this is what they do they breed the cows they take the cows then they start playing with the genes of the plants look at the history of this and then وَلَآمِرَنَّهُمْ and then I will then command them to what? لَيُغَيْرَنَّ خَلْقَ اللَّهِ and then I will command them to change the creation of Allah so first lead them astray then give them hopes it's called the new world order it's called transhumanism it's called eugenics it's called a better world. It's called a world without overpopulation. It is called a world in which what uh, you can put your consciousness into a computer and have all the pleasures you ever desired. Okay, you can put your consciousness and all your desires for pleasure in, in into a in, into something virtual, and then you don't need to get married. Okay. وَمَنْ يَتَّخِذِ shaytan And whoever takes shaytan as his wali, as his protector, as his friend, مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Other than Allah, you leave the natural world that Allah created and go into the world that shaytan will create. لَقَدْ خَسِرَ خُسْرَانَ mubina. Indeed, you have gone far. Over here, look at the words. خَسِرَ خُسْرَانَ mubina. خَسِرَ خُسْرَانَ مُبِينَ خَسَر means loss. A loss upon a loss that's clearly a loss. You've gone into the unnatural world and now it's the rules of shaitan that will rule you and not the rules and the sunnahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they want to create this world. Okay? And that world, uh, the United Nations, as you know, uh, one of its uh, signs and symbols, as you know, is the web. Right, the United Nations, uh, United Nations uh, logo or uh, symbol, okay, is the okay. That's the web, okay. So you have the internet. That's the World Wide Web. And what does Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say about the ankubut, the spider? The house of the spider is the weakest of the spiders, and that is the house that Allah gives the simile to, that is the house that is other than the one Allah gives you. Okay? Because it has no foundation. Okay? It looks very beautiful. Right? It looks very, uh, great architecture behind it. It looks great in terms of its looks, but substance-wise, it's very flimsy. Okay? And so, uh, without taking too long on this issue, so we'll be looking at this uh, paper of UNESCO, its purpose and philosophy, that has to do with what has to do with this very very idea of transhumanism okay and i'll be sharing that with you the uh, and so the aims laid down by unesco will be going over that too okay and so the united nations has all these uh, branches and we'll talk about the club of rome a little bit later now over here i wanted to talk about Plato's theory of human nature was that human beings are insufficient and they need something, they need to be higher evolved. And in the 19th century, that started as eugenics and now has become what is what we call, instead of playing with genes only, why don't we play with genes and also add technology to that? Okay? Why don't we also add technology to that? So now, the great reset, a Plato as Plato wanted, where the wise men, the experts who know nothing, who say in the beginning, don't wear a mask, and then say, no, you have to wear a mask. These wise men, they rule. Okay? And then what? The immortality medicine. This is what they want. Okay? And uh, so now let's look at uh, the Council of Clubs. This is the uh, website. This is the the Council of, uh, the Club of Rome, sorry. Okay? So the uh, the Club of Rome... Uh, the Club of Rome came out with this first global report, okay, this ro uh, about how 
The Limits of Growth, Essential Reading for All Those Concerned About the Future and the Planet. The book was translated into 37 languages. Now President uh, Emeritus Alexander King and Secretary General uh, uh, review global problems 20 years on, offering both warning and an approach to possible solution. Topics covered, and by the way, that's interesting because they do the same thing, right? These experts, we're going to warn you, but we're going to give you the good news, just like the prophets do. Okay. So they, you know, they have, they have these books published that the United Nations, it's like the Bible of the United Nations. Okay. So that's the easy way to put it. Okay. Topics covered by the book include the need for the world to convert from a, uh, from a military to a civil economy, the recognition of uh, disastrous effects of, uh, you know, it, it, it words everything in a positive way, but it's basically talking about a one world government. Okay. And it will do all these great things. The Jad will do all these great things for many, many people in order to convince them that he's the right one. Right? So it's the same thing. So now population matters. Okay? So eugenics and population and population control. Okay? The world and the United Nations must reduce population growth. So now over here you must understand why Bill Gates is investing in genes in, in uh, the famous uh, big company that does uh, crops and changes their genes. I forget their name right now. But uh, you all know them, Moderna or something like this, okay? The world and the United Nations must reduce population growth. It is no wonder that UNESCO and its philosophy is also what? Is UNESCO, in one of its philosophies, is reduction of population, human population. And what does that mean? You have to get rid of who? You have to get rid of the poor. As Sultan Yasin says, so beautiful. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ When it is said to them, spend on those who Allah Allah has given you risk, so spend on those who Allah hasn't given. قَالُوا إِنَّا مَنْ نُطْعِمُكُمْ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنُطْعِمُ وَلَّوْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ أَتَمَا Should we feed those who Allah didn't want to feed? This is exactly what this uh, reduction of world population partly includes, okay? Should we feed those Allah didn't want to feed, okay? So now, uh, let's, uh, the Club of Rome, I, I talked a little bit about that. So the United Nations, the, the Department of Economics and Social Affairs, has 17 goals, okay, which every single country has signed on to, by the way, okay? You can name any Muslim country. Every Muslim country has, what, uh, signed on to this. And one of them is what? Population control, okay? Population control, okay, is one of the major things that they want to uh, c control. Uh, and and so they want to control population, okay? And so they're talking about sustainable development, sustainable developments to be able to sustain humanity at a lesser population, okay? And therefore have uh, less for the gov world government to deal with, okay? And so in order to do that, okay, in the name of eugenics, genetics and the uses of human heredity, okay? And so... Uh, I'll talk about this later if I get a chance. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, Europe is going green, the world is going green, but all of this is being used as, you know, COVID is being used as an international issue, right? G going green is being used as an international issue, but everything is moving towards what is moving towards gl globalized government. And all the Preparation for that has been done, okay? Uh, let me just continue over here. The Great Reset. So now this is the Great Reset. There is an urgent need for global stakeholders to cooperate in simultaneously managing and direct consequences of the COVID-19 crisis. Meaning this is a crisis. This is there, whether it was created or made. But the crisis is there. Now this is the time. To strike while the iron is hot. Let's take all the governments and make a world government. And they have done a superb job in getting all the governments to line up, okay, under a COVID-19 crisis and to do exactly what people that have nothing to do with government and statesmanship like Bill Gates to start dictating what needs to be done. 
Okay. And so, uh, and let me just uh, read this to you. This is on the World Economic Forum, by the way. We enter a unique window of opportunity to shape the recovery. This initiative will offer insights to help inform all those determining the future state of the global relations, the direction of the national economies, the priorities of societies, the nature of business models, and the management of a global commons, drawing from the vision and the vast exp expertise of the leaders engaged across the forum's communities. The Great Reset Initiative has a set of dimensions to build Build a new social contract. Those of you who have studied Rousseau's social contract, this is a new social contract. Okay, the honors and dignity of every human being. Okay, but we're going to do away with, as I will show you, where we're going to do away with the poor, the unwanted, those people who are not with us. Okay, so now, International Monetary Fund. Over here, I want to mention that the International Monetary Fund it gives funds. Uh, to who? It gives funds to uh, countries that need that have urgent bills to pay, but under what condition? And people don't know this about the IMF. I'm telling you, they don't just give you money and then expect money back in interest. That's not what they're doing anymore. They give you money. IMF gives you money and then tells you to do what the United Nations agenda is. It tells you to m change policies in the country. Every time IMF gives Pakistan money, every time IMF gives any Muslim money like Turkey or any other Muslim country, they give them money not on the stipulation of money coming back, but on policies of the country being changed. So I hope you understand this and I'm going to show this to you. Okay, IMF world's uh, controversial financial, uh, world's most controversial financial fighter, the IMF. Okay, so now they are controversial, but this is what they do. IMF con confidentiality. Okay, uh, designing effective programs, compliance with program conditions assessed. Most IMF financing is paid out in installments linked to what? Demonstrable policy actions. Demonstrable policy actions. You have to change, you have to pay the money back, of course. But to get the money, you have to show that you're going to change your policies. Okay. This is intended to ensure progress in program implementation and reduce risks to IMF resources. Okay. And then, uh, prior actions. These are steps a country used to take before the IMF improves financing. Okay. Uh, and then let me show you more on the same issue here. Okay. A, a country in severe financial trouble, unable to pay its international bill, poses potential problems for the stability of international financial system. The INF was created to pr protect any member country, whether rich, middle income, or poor, to turn to IMF for financing if it has a balance that needs to be paid. Okay, And then it talks about the na changing the nature of lending. Okay, Lending to preserve financial stability. Conditions for lending. When a member country approaches the IMF for financing, it may be in or near a state of economic crisis. With its current currency under attack in foreign exchange markets, its international reserves depleted, economic activity stagnant or falling, a large number of firms and households go bankrupt. Go, going bankrupt. In difficult economic times, IMF helps countries to protect the most vulnerable, is what it says. Well, what is that? Uh, and this is about its lending facilities, you know, all of these facilities. Uh, and then, after talking about its different uh, facilities, it talks about here, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, if I can find it, that you have to change the policies of the country to align yourself with the United Nations. Okay, So they've created this economy that on purpose uh, goes up and down, for different countries according to different cycles because of the way that they do the investment so is uh, the flexible credit uh, is is for countries with very strong fundamental policies so this for countries with strong uh, policies um let me see inshallah if allah allows me to uh allahumma salli ala muhammad uh, The IMF aims, aims to ensure the conditions linked to IMF loan disemberments are focused, adequately, and tailored to varying 
strengths of pol uh, members' policies and fundamentals. To this end, IMF dismisses the with the uh, with the country the economic policies that may be expected to address. Uh, so they'll have economic policies like, for example, you have to try to reduce your population. You know, you have to uh, get women to work in the workforce. Okay. Uh, you have to get women to work in the uh, workforce. In pr uh, and so I'm trying to find, I've already showed you from their own website where they said we have uh, conditions that we put in in terms of changing policies. Uh, but I'm trying to find it in this article also. Allahumma uh, sami Everything is done under this idea of economic, sustainable economic growth. Women going to work, for example, women having their freedom. You know, all these things are intertied. So the IMF loans are meant to help member countries tackle ba balance of payment problems, stabilize their economies, etc., etc. Uh, I wish I could find that part again, but uh, inshallah. Let's move on. Utilizing transhumanism. So now, how are these interlinked? Because these are all coherent parts of the same agenda. Whether it is IMF, whether it is UNESCO, whether it is any branch, whether it is WHO, World Health Organization, any part of the United Nation, they're pushing for their 17, 2030 agenda. Okay? And part of that is utilizing transhumanism for United Nations global goals. So now, what are those goals? Uh, okay, I'm going to actually um, show that to you over here. What is what is transhumanism and how does it affect you? Okay, so uh, this is all about augmenting human hearing. Okay, uh, augmenting the human uh, the ev ev evolution in hu hyperdrive. Okay. Evolution on hyperdrive. This is transhumanism. But what is it really about? It's really about control. Okay. Having control of the human being so he can be tracked. But in order to be tracked, in order to be controlled, right? What happens? In order to be tracked and controlled, now watch this. How are artificial intelligence, migration, and education connected? How can boosting innovation? reducing inequality and combating corruption help us to achieve the sustainable development goals in an increasingly complex world these connections can be hard to see yet a systemic understanding of global issues is essential the world economic forum developed strategic intelligence as a set of cutting-edge digital tools to explore understand and anticipate the forces driving transformations around the world at its heart are the forum's transformation maps. They depict and analyze the interdependencies between a wide range of topics, illustrating how developments in one area can impact others. Keep in mind, they've already done this work. They already understand all these interlinks of different aspects of society and how it's interlinked. By drawing on the collective intelligence of the forum's networks, transformation maps explain the factors driving change across industries, economies, and global issues. For example, by disrupting every aspect of technology, the fourth industrial revolution will have a profound impact on governance and affect the scale and... That's a subject in itself, fourth industrial revolution. So, the origins are from Shaitan to a type of Plato-type book to... Oh, I haven't even talked about a part of this that's very, very important. Inshallah, we'll get to that. But but all of this is about... if you're not If you're not for eugenics, if you're not for transhumanism, if you're not for the fourth industrial revolution, if you're not for your health compliance, okay, if you're not for this and that and that and that, if you're not for this, you're not part of this world government, okay, you, you'll be against the, the world government will see you as a foe, and hence the saying of the Prophet wasallam that it'll be harder to hold on to Islam, because Islamophobia is part of this, it's coming. But first you have to get the buy-in. You have to get all the countries to buy into the world government. Right? So right. So once you get that, then you show your, okay, 
you know, then they're going to, and, and then uh, there's going to be a, uh, a two part, you can say, uh, I'm not going to go into that right now. Hold on. Character of conflict. That will test the traditional role of governments, even as they confront other challenges such as the aging populations in advanced economies. Transformation maps cover more than 200 topics and are available in multiple languages. Each topic is defined by its key issues, the most strategic trends shaping that topic. Because we are not looking at topics in isolation, but instead at entire systems in transformation, we highlight how the issues depicted in one map are interdependent with other maps. The content is continuously updated by leading experts from the forum's extensive network. It is supplemented by machine cur- I hope you saw that 5G. ...rated feed of the latest findings and analysis from top universities and research institutions, and is enhanced by technologies used in machine learning, artificial intelligence, and advanced network analytics. The platform also incorporates economic, social, and political data, as well as time-lapse satellite imagery, allowing you to visualize trends in areas such as sea level rise, deforestation, global trade flows, and the refugee crisis. Strategic Intelligence is the World Economic Forum's most advanced knowledge resource you can use to navigate today's increasingly complex and interconnected world. You got to remember, um, World Economic Forum. So you got to remember, when you have slaves, and if your slaves are happy, you'll be happy. They'll keep you happy. And you got to keep your slaves fed and happy. So this is... So you got one world government. Now let's see uh, a little bit more about eugenics and and so so the transhuman aspect of this should be clear to you, right? And the sustainable uh, goals for people and for the planet population is one of the big agendas for this sustainable development. Meaning it's not sustainable to have overpopulation. Okay. So they put it in these great seventeen goals: zero poverty, zero hunger. How are they going to do that? They have to use technology to do that. G good health and well-being. This is what they're saying is going to be the next phase. By the way, this is very much the same repeat in history what happened when they first discovered, quote-unquote, science. Science, they said everyone has to go towards science. Let's bring everyone to science. Science was the big thing. Science will start solve the problems of starvation. Science, science will solve this problem and science will solve that problem. And... You have the whole world now going into this new one world order and it's going to fail. And that's when the Jan will come. Okay. That's when the Jan will come to save the day. Okay. And people are going to be tired of this secular godless system that they're going to want something religious. And I'm going to talk about that as, as time goes by. Good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth. Reduced in equi equities, industrial innovation, sustainable cities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, li life below water, peace, justice, and strong institutions, life on land, partnerships for goals. Okay? So, this is what they're using. They're using the IMF to give people, the countries, the loans to get these goals started. And these, on the outside, look very good. But in the inside, they're darker than darker than dark. Okay, and let's look at some of those aspects uh, that are and and it's dark because it's doing what the Quran says, changing the creation of Allah. It's all dependent upon going from the natural to the unnatural. It's all dependent upon going into this like web. Okay. It's, it's, it's deeper than the World Wide Web. It's like webs at many World Humanitarian Summit. Okay. Building an agenda for humanity. Oh, and so this, uh, humanitarian action has never reached so many people in so many. So this is the, you know, the United Nations talking about, uh, it's humanitarian. So this is the humanism. Okay. So this is the other. And humanism now becomes transhumanism. And transhumanism means Basically, do away with people that don't agree with you. Okay. Transforming our world, the 2030 agenda for sustainable, uh, okay. Uh, and so, how can the world be uh, prosperous? Well, the world can be only prosperous if what? You have what? If you have less population. So, keep this in mind. Uh, so, now. 
the New Deal. Okay, so let's start at the very beginning of where things happen. This is how the United Nations was formed. After the League of Nations, they formed the United Nations. Who formed the United Nations? It's called the New Deal. The New Deal was a series of programs like public work projects, financial reforms, and regulations enacted by President Franklin Roosevelt. Okay, so President Roosevelt is the one who came up with the idea of the United Nations. I don't think many people know that. In the United Nations, it states between 1933 and 1939, it responded to the needs of relief, reform, and recovery from the Great Depression. Okay, so we'll uh, go into that. Into that. Uh, so it was Franklin Roosevelt after World War II who changed the world at that time, who helped change the world. Essentially, it was a different world after World War II. And that's what we're still living right now. But we're in the crossroad between that world that Franklin Roosevelt created and this new world that we're going into. Okay. And uh, so over here, history of United Nations. Okay. United Nations coined by the United States President Franklin Roosevelt was first used in Declaration of the United Nations. He's the one in 1942 who started the idea of the United Nations. Okay. So uh, President Roosevelt did that, okay? Then uh, you have reversing setbacks to poverty reduction requires nations to work together for resilient recovery. That's clear. Um, so you have uh, Julian Huxley. Now, he is a friend of Roosevelt, and he was an evolutionary biologist, a eugenicist, and he believed in reducing population as a major part. So if there's a reason to reduce you, if there's a reason that we should, uh, you know, uh, get rid of you, they'll be happy to get rid of you because the, the, the future of the world depends upon less population, according to them. And so they're going to do that. They're going to do that through wars. They're going to do that through, through uh, other means, uh, giving people that are poor uh, uh, genetically modified food that isn't really food for example, which Bill Gates is actively doing, as you know, okay? Uh, then you have, uh, for example, the World Bank, but uh, Julian Huxley is, by the way, my, uh, Bill Gates' mother used to work for Julian Husky, okay? And Julian Husky actually gave a whole speech once praising his mother. Um, okay, so where are we going to go from here? Cognitive Liberty Online, okay? So let me just uh, share with you, uh, UNESCO, uh, Julian Husky, UNESCO, and eugenics, okay? Uh, so he says this, uh, it is, however, essential that eugenics should be brought entirely within the borders of science. For it is already in indicated and not very remote, in the not very remote future, the problem of improving average quality of human beings is likely to become urgent. And he's right about that. And this can only be accomplished by applying the findings of truly scientific eugenics. So they're out and about, and United Nations and UNESCO is out about trying to change our genes. Now, I wonder if the vaccines of COVID would help in that. Okay. UNESCO and its purpose and its philosophy. World evolutionary humanism. So the religion becomes humanism, eugenics and UNESCO, the task of uni unifying the world mind. And this is what the United Nations did. It told the Muslim countries, it told the countries around the world that you have to have these things in your syllabus. You have to teach these things. You have to teach in this way. Okay. And so the education for world government, and that has happened through movies, that has happened through school. It has happened in various forms. Guiding society through art and science. Okay. Mass media division of UNESCO. Okay. So uh, this is what they want. This is what UNESCO wants. They want a world government. And who, World Health Organization, that's leading this COVID-19 scenario, is just, they're, all, they're all interrelated with one another. And like I said, when they give loans to any Muslim country, okay, which is literally... Ten, tens of them, right, or almost a hundred of them, you can say. So they, they, when they give them these loans, they give them the loans on the basis that you have to follow the world agenda. Okay. 
Now, uh, the economic uh, eugenics of John, so this was one of the friends of uh, John Hus uh, Husky, uh, the guy that uh, founded the UNESCO of the United Nations, uh, but I'm not going to go into this right now. Uh, Keynes favored eugenics. He was a eugenics. That was the famous economist on whose school of thought all of this is working. Keynes favored eugenics, uh, migration restrictions, and population control. Okay, so the, so the, the the economic the, the world economic form, as you know, is basically a, a intellectual. It is the intellectual child of Keynes. Okay, most of the economic systems of the world today are. They all follow Keynes, and so they all believe in world population control. Okay, and uh, I'm going to share with you some of these quotes people have. Uh, this is Keynes on population. Okay, so you can see this. This is a whole thing Keynes wrote on population. You know, uh, and then over here, the New Republic. Too many people. A case for population control. And so how, economics, eugenics, transhumanism, loans, the, these, the reset, all of this is interlinked. Your, your health and technology, all of these are interlinked with one another. Okay? And they all go back to that statement of Shaitan. But first, uh, I want to share with you uh, some of the uh, statements. Thus, this is what this is what uh, these people think. Thus, low-grade mental defectives cannot uh, be offered. So, somebody might consider me in their world as a low-grade mental defectives because I don't understand what they're saying, so I must be stupid. So, we need to get rid of these people. The low-grade mental defectives. These are ex experts of that UNESCO paper that I showed you in the beginning. Thus, low-grade mental defectiveness cannot be offered equal equality of educational opportunity and art, nor the insane equal with the sane before the law or in respect with freedoms. However, the full implications of the fact that human inequality have not often been drawn and certainly need to be brought out here. Okay. Then he says in another quotation, in the face of it, indeed, the principle of equality of opportunity must be amended to read, equality of opportunity within the limits of aptitude. So, if you're poor, well, we can't really do much about that. You need to die. You're, you're a burden on society. You're dead weight on society. This is what these people, and I'll show you that these people have written this, and not only their, their followers have written this. Okay? I forget the name of the person who is the, uh, the, the, the social evolutionist, the famous one, uh, who uh, who also talks about this. Thus, even though it is quite true that any radical eugenic poli policy will be for many years politically and psychologically impossible, but it will be important for UNESCO to see that eugenic problem is examined with... Now, if the in vaccinations are coming through the World Health Organization, which is a UN department, and this UNESCO, which believes in eugenics, is also a United Nations... Uh, a, a branch of the United Nations, okay, and they're all working in in with similar goals. So, who knows what will be happening? Uh, so, uh, the problem is examined with the greatest care, and the public mind is informed of the issues at stake, so that much of that is now unthinkable may at least become thinkable. So, they were moving in this direction of one world government, transhumanism, take human beings out of nature. And then what put them in basically in the control of Shaitan. So, uh, uh, and then of course is the Bill Gates uh, website, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates uh, website. Okay, so this is this is what's happening. Transhumanism is not going to be about equality, and I'll tell you why. When you're talking about technology, the people that will be able to afford the best technology are going to be the rich. And the poor people are not going to be able to afford where things are going right now with the Great Reset, where the government's going to give you the handouts if you comply with their orders. Then you're going to get, get subsistence level of some, you know, 
some minimum subsistence level. This is what they imagine. You'll get some sort of minimum subsistence level living. As long as you comply with whatever they say. Okay. Then number two, if you want to rise in the ranks, you have to, of course, then, then agree with their ideology. And the whole point is what? The whole point is to make the richer richer. Okay. And so the rich can have the best technology, the best surveillance, the best everything. It's never going to be equal. It has never has, never will. And so these are false promises that shaitan is giving these people and to therefore to us, which we need to say no to, absolutely no to. And so no to vaccines uh, because they cannot be trusted. These people cannot be trusted. They have a very vicious agenda. And so uh, over here, I think I want to uh, go over this verse of the Quran again, okay, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this in very clear terms. Okay, let me have him do the recitation since I have dyslexia. <laughs> وَمَنْ يَتَّخِذِ الشَّيْطَانَ وَلِيًّا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ خَسِرَ خُسْرَانًا مُبِينًا Over here I want to show you about the cutting of the ears of the cow. Ears of cow slit. Uh, just showing you the pictures right now and I'll go into the detail of it later. Okay. Uh, oh, let's see, cows, uh, so you can have whole herds, okay, where the, you see this, where all these cows, their ears are slit, okay, and this came in the Quran, that it would happen, and it's a sign since it's happening, that now shaitan is in a situation where now he can command the world. According to his, you know, his music that he wants, he's like the, uh, what's that guy called who moves the sticks and everybody sings the music according to that, right? The composer, okay? So he's the composer now. He's in a situation where he can command the world to move in a certain direction. And what is the direction that he wants to move man in? That becomes clear here. I will lead them astray. I will lead them astray. After that, then I will give them great hopes of what will happen in the future. And then once I've given them the hopes, they want it, they desire it, they have hopes, they have big plans, they have big you know, designs, they have everything figured out, they, have, they think they got it all down. And then when they think they have it all down, then all I have to do is just tell them do this and do this and do this. And they're going to follow through because greed hopes and greed greed will move you in that direction and we'll move into this from a godless society to to a super godless society a hyper godless society where it'll be very hard to remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we'll be cons constantly in in a situation where we have nothing to do with nature everything will be man-made and i will then command them what to slit the ears of the cows and and I will command them what? After that, the next phase is, after cutting the ears, which has already happened, now the next phase is, They will change everything in the creation of Allah. They will augment it through eugenics, through changing the genes. They will augment it through what? Adding technology and biology and, and together. Okay? And what? And then after that, you're completely in that direction. Because then once you have technology that's godless moving in that direction, and the algorithms that they want in place, and their coding in place, and everything in place, and once they've made you into what? Into this demigod, into this pagan god, into like a Hercules. You have access to the oracles. You know what's happening in the future. Everything seems like everything is perfect. In a situation where you don't need to remember Allah. You don't need to say inshallah anymore. Why don't you need to say inshallah anymore? Because technology is going to do it. What will fail? 
Nothing will fail. Technology will make sure it happens. I press the button. It's going to happen. I will do this tomorrow. Let me press the button. I don't say inshallah now. Now because I'm pressing the button. Okay? And so there's no need to say inshallah now. And whoever takes shaitan as his wali, min dunillah, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? فَقَدْ خَصِرَ خُسْرَانُ مُبِينَ If you go into this direction of where you will become part of that world where shaitan has changed the creation of Allah, and then he will have more waswasa on you, more control over you, more effect upon you, and he will move you into that paganism mentality where everything is fragmented and nothing is unified. Because only with Allah everything is unified. And when everybody is becoming like a demigod themselves, and when the world works as a demigod itself, right? Then, then everything will become fragmented in the mind and the psyche of the human being. We were created to be in nature, and to manipulate nature to our benefit, but not to make, uh, not to make nature, not to make technology our gods, our protectors, our everything, our direction in life, our qasd our sabil, our, you know, everything. And so this is where we're going. And this is where the United Nations is taking human beings. And the first major, major step of that was 9-11. Now that 9-11 happened, now COVID is step number two. The big number two step that's going to change. Just like after 9-11, the world was transformed. This number two step is a bigger step than even the, uh, the reset that was done after World War II. Okay, where everything moved from the way things were to the petrodollar monetary system. What we're entering into is a new world, a new world order, where directions will be given now from, not from the leaders of the country, but the leaders of the country themselves will be consulting a, a United Nations. Okay, and as the economies go down, the IMF gives the, uh, the bailouts to countries like Greek and, and, and maybe even the U.S. It's already given a loan to New York, New York State. As the United States states go bankrupt, IMF gives them a loan, puts on its conditions. Everybody puts on the conditions. As the United Nations becomes stronger, it increases its conditions. And so this is where we're going and this is where we're headed to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us.